Okay, here we're going to be looking at a consolidation for an intra-period purchase using a simple equity method. And this is where, our, for our example here, the parent is going to purchase the subsidiary here on 7-1 or July 1st of the year X1 here. So they're making a mid-year purchase or they're making this purchase here at, during the year here. So this is what we have to uh, look at here when we're doing this intra-period, our consolidation for the intra-period purchase. And there's key points here that we have to be concerned with. So let's go down and uh, first look at our first key point here and that's to do with the retained earnings here of the subsidiary corporation here uh, that we would record here and what we're going to be working off here is a consolidation worksheet. So this retained earnings here for the sub subsidiary corporation has to be updated here for the purchase date here of July 1st or 7-1 of year X1 here. So what has to be done here is the retained earnings of the sub here it has to be updated, of course, to this uh, July 1st date here. So we're going to close all the nominal accounts here for the subsidiary to the income statement. And then we're going to have to subtract out any dividend declared if there was any here for the subsidiary. So the retained earnings would include uh, any income or loss for the first six months of the year, less any dividends that were declared. So let's just go up here and look at our little uh, uh, in a diagram here. So we're going to take our net income here and close it to the retained earnings. So we take our revenues here, they're going to go to retained earnings, the expenses to the retained earnings, and the cost of goods sold here to the retained earnings. And we're going to also uh, deduct any dividends. They're going to be going to the retained earnings. Now this here represents the first six months of earnings uh, for the subsidiary here. This is the subsidiary's first six months and this dividends here would represent any um, dividends that were declared here, declared here for the first six months. That would be the January 1st through the July 1st date here for these um, this net income here and this dividends declared. So this is what we have to update here on our consolidation worksheet and in this case it happened to be $116,000 after the update. Okay, the next item that we have to be concerned with is the investment account here, the parent's investment account here in the subsidiary, and that has to be uh, updated here through the end of the year at a 1231X1 date when we're making this consolidation. So let's go up here and look at it. The original cost here the, at the purchase date or what the parent paid for the subsidiary was $212,800, and that is based here on the purchase date of 71 of X1 here and they bought an 80% interest here in the subsidiary. So what we have to now include is uh, the income earned for the uh, six month period here for the subsidiary and any dividend paid here by the subsidiary and this is after the purchase date. This would be the amount here between the 7-1 through the 1231 um, date here, X1 date here. And the sub had uh, six months, uh, earned six months of income here of $40,000. The parent gets 80% in this case, and that would be $32,000 here. And then the sub declared a dividend here for $10,000. Parent gets 80% of that, so that would reduce here uh, the um, the investment account by $8,000. So our investment account here in a subsidiary is updated here to $236,800 and that's as as of the end of the year. So that's what we'd have here in our trial balance here for the parent um, uh, interest here in the subsidiary. And then the final item here would be the subsidiary income that we would record here. Now on the consolidated income of the consolidated company is to include only the sub's income earned after the acquisition date. So the in sub's income earned and dividends paid prior to the acquisition is included in this updated retained earnings here at the purchase date. But the subsidiary income that is included here in our consolidation is only the income earned after the purchase date. All right, next we're going to look at our eliminations, and that's going to be based here on the first year, eliminations made on the first year. So first looking at our distribution schedule here. Now, the distribution schedule, that must be based on the shareholder's equity on the interim, per, interim purchase date here. And for this example, that purchase date here was seven, July 1st of the uh, year X1 here. So our purchase price here, the parent bought 80% of it for $212,800. So so 
based on that, the implied fair value would at 100% here would be 266,000 dollars, and the non-controlling interest would be 53,000. $200 or 20% here of the implied fair value. And then of course our um, total equity here was based on the common stock and the retained earnings here for the subsidiary. But the point has to be made here with the retained earnings. This retained earnings balance that had to be updated to the uh, July 1st or the 7-1 purchase date here. And then the other item here was the excess of the fair value over the book value or that was the difference between the equity here and the fair value of the subsidiary. And that based on our value analysis here we had a subsidiary's fair value of 266,000 and then the fair value of the net assets well, that was calculated separately and that was 216,000 so we had goodwill here in the uh, acquisition and that was for $50,000 so for our example here this ex excess of the fair value over the book value that was allocated totally to the goodwill uh, divided up between the parent getting uh, 80% of it or 40,000 and then the non-controlling interest getting 10,000 or 20% of it. Okay next to make our eliminations and our adjustments and starting with our distribution schedule here. So first thing we have to do is eliminate 80% here of the equity here in the sub. So that is shown here on our distribution schedule. So going over here to our worksheet 80,000 here would go to debit the uh, common stock here for the subsidiary and then the remain are the 92,800 would go here to debit retained earnings here for the subsidiary and then the balancing amount here would go would be for $172,800 and that would reduce the investment account here in the subsidiary. And then we have to deal with our excesses here. So and that's all based on our the goodwill here. So we'd go up to uh, debit our goodwill account here for $50,000 and then the balance would go to crediting or reducing the uh, subsidiary investment account here for 40000 and then the other uh, credit here would go to retained earnings for, here for the subsidiary for uh, $10,000 in this case. And then we have to deal with uh, eliminating this 80% here of the sub's income and that was 30 credit the investment account here for 32000 and then we debit the subsidiary income account here for 32000 and then finally just taking care of this 80% dividend declared by the sub so we debit the investment account or increase the uh, for, for this uh, subsidiary or the investment account here for the parent and the subsidiary for $8000 and then the balancing amount here would go to credit dividend declared here for $8,000. Okay and finally to make a point here in the subsidiary income that's recorded here on the trial balance for the parent here for in this case the parent would be receiving $32,000 and the consolidated income includes only the subs income earned after the purchase date and only this income here is distributed to the non-controlling interest and the controlling interest Earn, income earned and dividend paid prior to this uh, purchase date here on 7-1 is included here in the retained earnings that we updated here on 7-1. And of that, the non-controlling interest is going to receive their share.